Tim's father in a Christmas carol. Carol? Can we think about uh fifth? In bowling, how many pins must he knock down to get a spare? Nine. No, ten. <laughs> Six. Six. According to Greek legend, who stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans? Zeus, Neptune, or Prometheus? Prometheus. Oh, thank you. Yes. Six. Six. What plant parasite that grows on trees encourages kissing in December? Encourages kissing in December. The kissing bug. Oh, it's a, oh, oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Five. <laughs> yeah. uh, six. In what sport, <laughs> named after an English school, do the team lock arms in a scrum? Quidditch. Rugby. <laughs> what does Winnie the Pooh love to eat? Honey. <laughs> Do a second group. Um, four. Inspector Gadget's enemy, Dr. Claw, has a pet. What is its name? Toodles. Oh, wait, bye. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what? So? Proudly.
So what did y'all think? No. It's terrible. No? It's terrible. <laughs> Caleb, what'd you think? Did you enjoy it? Well, not that. Caleb liked it. He was giggling the whole time. Oh, yeah? I liked it. Yeah, it looked like fun. Entry for our field day in fifth grade. Yes, I did bring my own track spikes, so I made sure that I could win. Not that it was all about winning, except it was about winning. Seven, Seventeen. Okay. So if you got sixteen or more, go sit down. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, come back, come back, come sit down. Go stand over in the special holding bin. Penalty box. Penalty box. There you go. Okay. Catherine, how many did you have? 15? 14. 14? 11. 11? 9. 9. Oh. 9. Oh. 11. 14. 15. <laughs> Catherine hasn't given me a hug all trip. <laughs> Congratulations to our ladies' winners. All right, if you have 16 or more, have a seat. Oh, sorry, Gertie. Can I go stand that whole time? What's wrong with it? about 15 or more? Oh, you do. 14 or more. Okay, all right. You three get the holding bin. Start, start your calculations now. May Day, Will Day, and Luke Hillier. Okay, what do we got? Well done. So the, the, the guys champion is Drew Day, the girls champion is Aubrey Anderson, overall champion is Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Thing for them, you know, they're just kind of so naive and innocent. That's not how Proverbs uses it. Listen to these verses about what it's like to be naive. Naive in, in this case is like that person driving their car who doesn't know it needs oil. They're, they're, all they know is turn the key and go, and it's not going to work out well for them. Proverbs one twenty two says, How long, O naive ones, will you love being simple-minded? And scoffers delight themselves in scoffing, and fools hate knowledge. A naive one is somebody who just thinks, Ah, life's easy, and I'll be fine. Proverbs one thirty two says, The waywardness of the naive will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. The naive one who thinks, oh, life will be fine, they're ultimately going to wander in places that destroy them.
But sometimes we can be tempted towards good things, like, oh, I, I do want relationships. I want to have friends. I want to be able to influence other people. And I do need, if I just compromise a little bit, I'll, I'll have those relationships and that opportunity to, uh, to be a good influence or things like that. Or maybe it's I want a, a good grade at school. There's nothing wrong with wanting that. That's a good thing. And yet we can subtly think, well, so it's okay to maybe cheat a little bit and, and do something uh, to, to help me to do better on this test than I would by myself. Because that's the false promises of sin, to say, oh, if you just do this, it will it'll get you what, what is best for you, even though God says that's not how you should. So guys, God cares about and gives wisdom for our speech. He also gives us hope when we fall short of that because of Christ. But he cares about the amount of our speech, how much we talk. He cares about the content of our speech, what we talk about. He cares about the context of our speech, when and to whom we talk, and the tone of our speech, how we talk. But he cares most about the heart of our speech. About we live for you know, relationships with girls. We can live for our pleasure and our excitement, our entertainment, for worldly success. We can be popular. You, you know, let's, this is what the pursuit was. You know, I have to decide, do I want that? And am I going to hang out with those? Or do I want to be godly and have his wisdom and hang out with those who were committed to that pursuit? You guys, choose wisdom. Say, Lord, I want, because of my fear of you, I want to grow and be wise. And I know that the people I surround myself with will shape my thinking, and I want them to be ones that spur me on, and I want to be the kind of person who spurs me on, spurs others on. And I want to listen to those in my world, whether that's youth leaders, whether that's parents, older siblings who are walking with the Lord, I want to be quick to listen. When they say, hey, don't think that way, that's wrong and that's foolish. I want to have ears to hear I want to be wise. As, as Proverbs says in chapter 3, how blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her profit, the profit of wisdom, is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. 